I drove my Lance on December 10th, 1981 and decided I wasn't going to drink anymore, that I was going to be a brave person, that I was going to make some change in my life. And that's what I've done. This fantasy that I had conjured up about uh, getting sober, alcohol-free, and, and working with people and being an artist uh, was a plan, was a vision in my life. And so uh, I, I, I couldn't enact the plan until I quit drinking, so I quit drinking. W without the art, if I hadn't uh, continued to paint in my sobriety, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here. Period. I would have been, I would have died alcoholically somewhere. My art uh, has kind of recaptured uh, uh, the, those things I lacked about who I was, about being an Indian, being a Anishinaabe, an Ojibwe, a Chippewa. Uh, I needed uh, something to, to fill that void that I had, and it had to be art. Couldn't be anything else. And I, I wanted to sell art, make a living at it, and. And uh, at the age of 39, you either do it or you don't. So I decided to do this full time. Art is a spiritual process. And when I talk about my art, I include the creator. So I say we. I prefer to do that because then it doesn't imply that I'm some sort of creative genius, you know. Uh, uh, I do this, but I think I'm inspired to do this. I think somebody saved my life to do this. I think somebody gave me a chance to get sober, to paint some history, contemporary history in Indian people. We, we try to do that with uh, great dignity and humor and uh, tradition and spirit and all the things that go on, go into these things. We made lots of practice runs, <laughs> uh, night after night after night, uh, defining what it was we were going to do. And <clears throat> it took us five or six years to arrive at the imagery that we best liked that represented our, our, our art and how that was going to grow. It's still growing. My images represent the things that I've seen, the things that I've heard, the good times and the bad times. And that's what we paint. My people today are contemporary Indian people, and that's what I want them to be. This person, uh, this chief guy dancing here, uh, is very traditional at a powwow, who, who, who may be uh, a professional, but he's a working individual. He's living in two worlds. You know, he is honoring his, his, uh, his Indianness, his tribe. Uh, He's honoring uh, who he is. There's a renewal within the Indian communities about learning how to love each other again, how to, how to respect your partner in life, how to respect your children, how to respect your spirituality, how to respect tradition, uh, your parents and your grandparents, uh, the lore that's handed down. Uh, these things are important. So we try to interject those things. When we started out using the eagle feather, we elongated our eagle feathers because eagle feathers are important to people, important to Indian people. Uh, the eagle itself, you know, uh, was, uh, is, a, is a bird that, uh, uh, that mates for life. With, with, a, uh, with, a, with a partner and they protect and they take care of their family and they soar the highest and they carry the messages to the Creator and they're closest to the Creator. And, and, and so the, the great, there's great homage paid to, to Eagle Feathers. So we began our process of using uh, uh, Eagle Feathers in our, in our art as, as a symbol of spirituality and 
And actually, eagle feathers denoted your status of the tribe. In the last couple of years, we began to, uh, to use a lot of nighttime stuff with, with stars, you know, because I'm a universe person. I believe in that. I believe that's part of the magic of being here and the magic of life. We've used uh, a lot of white space and then put, put the earth colors in on the bottom and extended braid tie all the way to the, to, the, to the earth. And then we've put little strings of hair into the earth. We've used the four, four race colors. They're real prominent in my life and my paintings because uh, I believe we should all live together as human beings regardless of who we are color, race, money, status, education, doesn't make any difference. People, human beings hurt and they need, when they're in pain, somebody should be there for them. So we, you know, it's, we're talking truth here in some degree about Indian people uh, and the things that we do. Uh, we did an image uh, called For All My Relations last spring uh, for the National Indian Justice Center and had to do for victims of violence. And <clears throat> I, I remember being at a Sundance up in Ignatia with the Southern Utes when the, the, uh, the wall in Berlin, when they were tearing that down. <clears throat> they usually sang three, say, three songs, you know, or some. But that year they added a song at the Sundance and they sang the song to the public in honor of that wall coming down. They were singing a song honoring the coming down of the apartheid in South Africa. They were singing songs that were enhancing humanity, helping other people. I'm talking about a very small community of people, 1,200 people in that community who have tremendous problems that were that care enough to sing about and help other people. That's what this represents, this for all my relations, symbology of people sitting in this teepee praying or discussing problems. Uh, we're not so uniquely different as humans that somebody should be helped more than others.